I call Alex Riley to be followed by Mike McKenzie. Thank you. Um, in looking at the, the motion that's in front of us today for Margaret Burgess, um, who wouldn't um, agree that it's to be welcomed 21,000 and odd affordable homes and 15,000 social rented homes? Um, you know, given, given the kind of housing crisis that we have in Scotland, I'm sure we would welcome any investment in terms of housing. The problem with this, this motion, however, is that it really just congratulates um, the, the Margaret Burgess and the SNP government on what they've done without failing to really look at what the issues are. So let's look at the facts. 150,000 people and over are on council house waiting lists across Scotland. 4,000 children in Scotland currently living in temporary accommodation. 36,000 homeless applications to Scottish local authorities in 2013-14. An estimated 65,000 households in Scotland were living in overcrowded homes in 2012. Now those are, those are big figures, but what we should be remembering in this parliament and this debate is these are real people real people in every constituency across Scotland. I was in a house in Resyth just this week and met a family who are in a, an overcrowded position um, and in one room alone, three bedrooms packed in and the council telling them that the house is, is too cramped and that's why they've got condensation and they're having to throw mattresses out. There's people living in those types of conditions and unsuitable housing across Scotland and that's what we should remember in this debate. We are talking about real people people. Yeah. John Mason. I thank the member for giving way. He describes uh, real, real problems and I see some of these as well. Would he and his party commit uh, more funding to housing and say take it off colleges or take it off health? Ali Shiley. Well, I would make the point and go on to make the point that Shelter and other housing groups are saying that we need to build at least 10,000 socially rented houses per year. I certainly, for one, will be campaigning to achieve those kind of targets, and I'll say a bit more about that. But in terms of funding, yes, we need to look at more money. There are, Jimmy Day mentioned, powers that are coming down. There's more capital expenditure coming available, and the current negotiations will result in more. But I would also draw the Parliament's attention to a paper that has been circulated by Eunice in Scotland, where Eunice in Scotland actually put forward the view and the idea about the local government pension funds. Currently in Scotland, the local government pension funds are valued at £24.1 billion. Pound. And the point is made in their document that if you actually look at where you could actually get um, investment over a 25-year period, then, then pension funds like this should be, looking, be looked at to invest in public works and, and in public services like providing um, council housing. So there are ways of actually raising the monies both through, through the councils themselves and through the, the parliament, but also in the case of Fife Council where they did a partnership with the tenants, raised the rents and are now building over the period of five years 2,700 houses. And Margaret Burgess, when whilst congratulating herself, doesn't actually congratulate the councils across Scotland that are coming up with innovative schemes to be able to build houses. So I would say to you, if we're ambitious enough and if we've got the political will and drive to actually tackle this issue, then we should be in a position to come up with, to come up with a lot of ways of being able to build houses. There are currently 23,000 long-term private sector empty houses across Scotland. And again, there's work that could be and should be done there to start to look at that. But my point about the lack of ambition in this motion and the lack of ambition coming from the government, rather than simply congratulating yourself for what you have achieved, we should start to set out a clear national housing strategy for Scotland. Clear action, clear targets, authority by authority, area by area, because even if we were to come up with the funding through the Unison proposal, through the powers that are coming into this Parliament, there are other obstacles in our way. This Government should be talking to every local authority across Scotland. We should be starting to identify and ask for an audit of all land that is available to be able to build council and social rented housing. We should be looking at the planning system that is in place and the difficulties and the delays, because if there is 
was one thing I learned in Fife. It was one thing to raise the money to build the 2,700 houses. It was quite another to then put them in place. We should be looking at partnerships with private developers. We should be looking at devising policies so that we're able to agree with private developers a number of houses that can be built in every housing development across Scotland in a new partnership. It should be about that vision. The benefits of that in terms of jobs, in terms of apprenticeships, in terms of, in terms of giving people the housing that they need, those benefits cannot be understated. So I would say that it is about having ambition. It is about looking at new ideas such as that coming forward by Scotland. And it is about saying that we will sign up to the principle of shelter and their 10,000 houses per year. Nothing less will be good enough to try and tackle the housing crisis that we have. Thank you very much.